And yes, so this is a kind of a unique talk in, in terms of uh, this uh, uh, this whole event that uh, I came from. I'm coming from a different world, a little bit outside of QMU or KVM, and now I'm working with the, in the OpenStack or the network virtualization layer right now. So that's kind. Of, this talk is about like that. And right, so I'm working on. A, I came from. Um, I'm working in Midokura, and just a, it, it, this company is really unknown, I guess. So I want to just briefly describe what is about about Midokura a little bit. So it's generally it's a 1.5 years old. Uh, it's a once one and a half years old company, which started in Japan, and it actually now has a three country office. Uh, I'm based in Tokyo, and one is also in San Francisco from this July, and also in the, uh, the Barcelona, and also mainly in the Europe uh, region. And there are three, uh, 13 plus members, meaning that we're actually growing right now. We're expecting more developers and more people to come into this company right now. And we're mainly, mainly having two core, core products right now. Uh, and that is the what we're talking about. One is the MiddleNet and MiddleStack. MiddleNet is the network virtualization platform, which I'm going to talk about today. And MiddleStack is a cloud service suite, which is uh, OpenStack based. And which that includes this network virtualization, which uh, in, in MinoNet, and also other other distributed storages and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And we are using KVM in this platform. Well, to be honest, this OpenStack actually is not strong on this KVM. For example, if you boot from uh, <laughs> default configuration, the virtio net is totally disabled. It's like commented commented out in the libvirt template file. So if you want to you, you want to use virtio which you probably want to, you got to change your configuration by hand. So why network virtualization, first of all? Um, that's because we think that's a bottleneck for the cloud environment right now. Uh, although the virtualization, like computers, are getting better. Of course, the, the virtualization in the servers, like it's getting better. But in storages, of course, it's getting better. But the network, meaning the configuration and those kind of thing, management, it's still the bottleneck in terms uh, from the data centers and all the system integrators' uh, perspective. So there are lots of VMs. There should be lots of VM running on the shared infrastructure on this kind of uh, cloud environment. So the users want to actually have much more control uh, rather than just a limited control like inside a VM around the VM. For example, like uh, letting the user to configure their own router, own switches, connect to a specific VM, and connect have another virtual switch connect to the VM like that. And also in the, these kind of cloud environment, you probably want to have uh, ephemeral resources. Like imagine that uh, EC2, uh, Amazon EC2, you actually don't have your, you know, usually you want just a, sp a specific period of time of virtual machine, you pay for it. So in case of a cloud, of course virtual machine can, you know, just create on the fly and destroy it on the fly, but network resources are a little more d difficult because you have to ask the operator, like a Cisco routers, and change the configuration, delete the switches, or remove it from physically from the rack, it's going to take a while, of course. So it's not on demand in that sense. So we actually think in, our goal is to make this network virtualization on demand. So we don't think, so in terms of virtual networks, some customers, of course, talk about, you know, uh, v, is it VLAN on a virtual network or network virtualization? And we don't think so. VLAN, of course, is kind of, a, well, virtualized virtualizing, and also it's sharing the resources. But in terms of management, like I said, huge data centers, like it's so, so, so we have tons of VMs running on a single host. So it's so complicated to manage this virtual LAN, VLAN or VLAN ID. And the single, it's limited to a single secure domain, meaning that you know, uh, other res, uh, bridge is not separate. Uh, it's only in a single security domain. So uh, users cannot create our own routers inside of it. It's not ephemeral, and meaning that you know it's it's not that easy to create or easy to destroy. It's not that scalable, and it does not have any network services. Mean this network service, meaning the routing or the firewalls or the the uh, load balancer, or those kind of additional services that you want to provide it to the users in kind of, in terms of the cloud environment. So our proposal is to make these networks network as a service, meaning that network resources should be created on demand and provided on demand. In, in an agile and much more flexible manner. So what are the benefits? So it's about, so there are a couple of things. First, so it's as usual like in the computer and in the, in the server virtualization, so it decouples uh, this virtual resource from the underlying hardware. Virtual topology is independent from the physical one. 
and the isolation. So we actually separate the, the users can separate the addressing and security and also the QoS from the physical topology. And the most important, one of the most important things is that we can delegate a control to the user via API. So the tenants can actually, you know, each, even on a single physical data center, we actually separate, so make it isolated, and then provide so, uh, virtual resources, uh, the API to actually control the virtual resources to the user. So for example, tenant A can have their own router with own IP addressing. Tenant B can have a different, totally different using NAT or load balancer or whatever in that kind of manner. And also, uh, so when we virtualize it, when we, we can have ephemeral virtual resources, so we can create on and destroy it at will, like we are doing right now in the server, inside the, uh, in the like, like virtual machines right now we're doing. And also, so network services are now integrated, should be integrated, like routing, firewall, and those kind of, and other features like load balancer. This means that NAT, source NAT, or destination DNATs are also in, should be integrated. This is the overview of uh, a kind of a virtual IDC, uh, virtual internet, uh, internet data center. And so you can see this is a very virtual view. So the tenant one is, has its own region and tenant two has its own virtual data center inside. So each VM, you know, one, two, one, three, five, it, uh, exists on this uh, tenant A, and which is connected to the virtual router, going through, which is connected also to the internet through this virtual, route, virtual router. So virtual, one, virtual VM1 and VM2 cannot talk to each other because it's not connected directly. Well, if, he, if the, this provider virtual router is routing, then it can uh, communicate, but generally it has its own separation. Like normally what you, do, what you expect for on the, in the physical world. Right, and so I'm gonna turn over to the next slides, which is going to be the physical topology. So you can see it's totally mashed in. So that virtual, to this virtual topology, is actually what's behind the scenes. This is the uh, behind the scenes. These, we have these kind of physical topology. On the internet side, you have three edges talking the BG, BGP to to, uh, to to exchange the routing information. On the right side, there's compute agents. As you can see, the VM1 and VM2 is actually residing in the same host. On the previous slides, it was on different tenants. But on this physical node, well, it, it's not necessary, but this is uh, just an extreme example. But you can see that VM1 is actually connected to the tenant, tenant one virtual router. And the VM2 is connected to this blue virtual router, which is belongs to the tenant two, uh, tenant, which belongs to tenant two. And these VM1 and VM2 cannot communicate directly. And these uh, two, I'll mention about much more in, about the implementation later on, but these, uh, these data path, uh, the, network, the, the key of our implementation is, is about this data path and the controller, uh, which shares, uh, all, it's, it, it shares a state. Uh, it's, so all of the clients inside these hosts shares the same state through, in, this, uh, in this private network in the distributed state in the uh, center of this, uh, this, this uh, cloud in the center of the slides. So, right, the principal designs, so we think, so currently uh, we think that intelligence should be at the edges because currently all the community hardware has more, more gaining more and more uh, processing abilities. So we were thinking that we should be able to uh, plot, uh, give more tasks to the edges. And also more, most importantly, those network services by letting the edges to function much more so that we can actually provide a service directly at the, at the closest part. For example, if we want to do some kind of firewall or filtering, then instead of having appliances go through this network and finally get dropped, just apply those rules or services directly at the, the inside of host so that you, know, you don't have, want to have, uh, have a package going through the physical network so that we can actually uh, reduce the number of packets going through, going actually using the physical network. And scalable and simple core. So Fabric is made of a very simple and cheaper devices, like a normal thing. So we're actually not using uh, appliances or like that. We're actually just using a commodity x86 server it connected to a switch, uh, switch or a very uh, simple uh, router to, 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 to manage. And also, so uh, we, are, we are much more based on software because since we believe that has more flexibility and extensibility and scalability at the end. 
And scale out, so, our, and also we th we should, we're thinking that we should uh, scale out rather than scale up. And so let the users pay only for what they're using and shut off the resources, what is not being used, which not only for the cost, but also we, which uh, results in the saving of energy, well, which is serious in Japan right now. Okay, so, so that to, to show that we're, no, what I have talked so far is not a vaporware, so this is a very simple uh, demonstration. Uh, this is about the virtual, this, is for, this demo is only for the virtual switch, I mean the L2. Uh, that this doesn't mean that we actually haven't finished implementation of the routers. We actually have, but those configurations could be a little bit too long for this presentation. So please uh, take a look at this as a virtual switch, but we actually have already finished implementing the routers and also the firewalls and NAT or those kind of uh, things. So we're going to create a virtual switch here and connect a VM1. We're going to connect another VM, of course, later on. So this is a dashboard, uh, which is based on OpenStack's dashboard. And if you want to create a switch, I mean, users want to create own, their own switch, what you have to do is just click the button there and print your name, uh, print the name of the switch, and just uh, press this create switch button. And yes, that's it for creating a virtual switch in, this, in, in our environment. So we want to have another a server, a VM, running uh, that's going to be connected to this switch. So you select the type of the VM, volume, and the final part that's attached to, we're going to select the switch, not what we created right now, and launch the server. So this is going to create a KVM, a launch of KVM uh, with this tab, and, was, and connect it, which is going to be connected to this virtual switch. So we want to, we will create another VM so that we can actually see that it, the, the you know, package go through this uh, virtual switch. So like already, since we already created the switches, so the switch, so what we have to do is just create another server, which is going to be connected to uh, the switch we created before, like we did, like we did before, and launch the server. So now we have two servers, uh, which is connected to the same virtual switch. This means that the virtual machine doesn't have to reside on the same host, it could be anywhere. And we actually don't know we, where these VM one or two is actually living right now, because it's not. It, it is tracked by OpenStack, but we, we're not tracking in this uh, dashboard right now. So uh, this is one of the VM. So see the, let's see the IP address here. So it's ten dot zero zero two, which is pre-configured right now. And go to the other host. See the IP address. Okay, let's just ping it. Right. So the communication goes through. So, which is now working. So this. So although this is a, uh, as I said, as I mentioned, so this is only for the L2 uh, demonstration video. We are, although we actually we have a, a demonstration for the L3 and more than that. For sure. So let me explain what happened behind the scene a little bit more in detail because it's a little bit clumsy to understand what's going on here. So when you actually user press the create switch button, we actually have a REST API uh, uh, for this middle net, and the dashboard is, is hitting the REST API. And once it hits this REST API, it's creating a virtual switch in this kind of uh, virtual switch on, in this uh, distributed state, which is shared between all the edges. And once this distributed state is created, so we want to launch, when we decided to uh, assign, uh, we lo so uh, well, after having this switch created, and then we want to connect the, uh, each VM to the switch. So when you launch the VM, uh, before launching the VM, this distributed state is shared to these uh, actual hosts. Uh, each host is running this MetaNet inside, and we're using OpenV switch uh, for controlling the data path, and also, uh, not only the OpenV switch, but also the OpenFlow protocol for handling speed these packets, which I'll describe a little later. So, what, so as usually, so VM wants to try, uh, send a packet. If, of course, it goes through the tab the, to the data path. So, and once it doesn't, so OBS uh, data path doesn't know whether uh, uh, OBS wants, uh, OBS is uh, go, uh, con gives the control to the, con the controller, OpenFlow controller, if it sees a packet which it, it doesn't know, it goes up to the mainnet, 
And because middlenet knows that this is this the port or the pack, the flow is is should be uh, is connected to this virtual switch, it says I know this and please uh, set up a rule which is going through to the the, the host uh, different host. So once the rule is set, it's going the packet is going to go through to the right uh, the host on the right side, and the same thing happens on the right on the right side host. That communicating with this OpenFlow uh, protocol, uh, seeing that the middle this middlenet is also connected to this virtual switch, and the packet is reached to the VM. And people think about the, you know what, what about the overhead? So once uh, the data path is actually uh, established and it's go through, there's no need to interact with this uh, OpenFlow controllers anymore. At the, it depends on the, how you set. Okay, okay, thank you. So it really depends on how the rules are set up. Um, so you can let the rules expire fast, but you really want to have a very decent time so that not all the packets go through to the upper layer to the controller every time. Um, in addition to this, this, that was a general idea about the, what, how the mineral is working so far. In addition, I'm thinking about the much more advanced use case so, uh, for the KVM line migration. So what the problem is that, the, well, it's not a big problem. To, uh, it's been a while for already a couple of years, I guess. The problem about the migrating the network is that uh, it's, it's the GR, gratuitous ARP, is sent to migrate the network. And this design has been for a while since probably the VMware migration or Zen migration came up. So the problem is that until this, this the physical switch knows that this MAC address resists, uh, on, uh, exists on the specific port, the packets may get lost until the path is really reset up. So it's been, I think this is a kind of something that it, uh, it's been for normal for a couple of years. But I'm wondering that whether the line migration without dropping a packet is possible or not. And I think that the VM and the virtual machine now can be orchestrated because we're the, because of this uh, infrastructure, uh, the virtual resource, the network resources can be configured by any software because we have an API. And first of all, it's uh, developed by software. So, for example, like it, there's it really doesn't make sense. But you actually once the VM wants to create send a packet, it can also if it hits the API and you can destroy the switches like that. So now we can have because of the software dev dev uh, defined network, we can control the virtual network as as we wish and as like uh, once uh, and have this VM and virtual network to be orchestrated to achieve this kind of thing. So what we actually are um, uh, expecting is like, so as usually, so there is a packet going through to the, single, the source host. So we start line migration. And packets are delivered only to the source as usual at the beginning. And let's start the port mirroring before actually completing the migration. So in the normal case, uh, you just you won't have these kind of states after like migration. You'll just switch it over right away. So we actually have a state that until this uh, switch knows uh, which uh, port uh, port is assigned to uh, which MAC uh, uh, no, which port can reach to this specific MAC address. There is a disconnect disconnectivity. So instead of having that kind of state, well, let's just. May assume that we're if you're migrating, then let's just uh, have a, a short time and period and period for port mirroring, for delivering the, all the packets to the source side and the destination host. And after finishing up and when the after uh, finishing up the migration, just end the port mirroring and remove the virtual port on the source host. And after that, packets can be delivered only to the destination host. So please remember that. So if this, we really, if we are interacting with the physical switches, it's, it could be a little bit difficult because most switches doesn't have, doesn't expose such kind of API. But we're interacting with the virtual switches or virtual routers now, which has a specific API, which could be hit from anywhere in this uh, environment. So we can try uh, such kind of uh, advanced uh, use cases. Okay, uh, a little bit fast, but can conclude a bit. Uh, so I described about the network. So we think that network virtualization enables a true cloud computing platform. So users can easily get uh, get their own network resources on demand, just like VMs. And our middlenet is a network virtualization platform from that. And not only the L2, we actually provide L3 and, and firewall, load balancers, NAT, fe NAT features. And it has this scalable and fault-oriented architecture. 
And you know, uh, because we're startups, so, so we actually have limited resource right now. Uh, we're looking for users and partners. And so to make it much more comfortable, we already started deploying the products to some partners and customers environment, which seems to be very nice so far. So this is the address for the sign up. We actually uh, have some more information if this sign up is uh, done. So I can provide probably can provide more detailed information if sign up if, if one uh, sign ups from this address. So we'll, I would be appreciate if you guys got um, much more interested in our product. Okay, thank you. Thank you for listening.